Hey dudes, let's look at some more Jesus tweets. Grab a hold of Jesus and never let go. <laughs> Just gotta have to note that the person saying this is um, Samuel John Thunder. Samuel John Thunder. My first thought was uh, the South Park episode with Cartman changing all the romantic songs to Christian songs by just changing, like, baby to Jesus. <laughs> and how, like, homoerotic uh, Christianity can kind of be sometimes. Um, in terms of guys talking about their love of Jesus. So yeah, <laughs> great example here. <laughs> Grab hold of him and never let go. I'm not lucky, I'm blessed, James 117. <laughs> As someone that doesn't believe in the supernatural, it's hard for me to see the difference between luck and being blessed, because there's, there's plenty of uh, people that believe in God that aren't so blessed, and there's people that believe in God that are very, very rich and blessed, I guess, but then there's really rich people that have no belief in God whatsoever, and like, how is God blessing people? I, I, just, yeah. <laughs> Following Jesus Christ is to be a happy warrior slaying forth, but we prefer to hunker down in our little fortresses and pull up the drawbridge. I just took a screenshot of this because I was just trying to understand what this guy was was attempt was trying to say because I, I think like a lot of intellectual Christians just say things that they think sound pretty and really smart but it doesn't mean much like I I'm just trying to break this down because what do you I, I guess I should just tweet this guy what is he saying but I just wanted to like wait and read it out loud here but I've heard the the Christian soldier thing, Christian warriors, and that they should be like spreading the word of, of God. That's part of being a, a Christian warrior, but is it a good thing that people are staying in their fortresses or is he criticizing them? I... His bio says evangelical home, then Oxford, and then an Anglican priest, now Catholic priest, blogger, author of The Mystery of the Magi and 15 other books, Husband, Dad. So, so much confusion of the, um, um, jumping around from sect to sect. Uh, when, when people do that, when, when I've heard of Christians being like, well, I didn't like the version of Christianity I was born into, but I tried these other types. I'm like, why are you even trying other types? Maybe Christianity just isn't for you? Maybe the fact that there are so many denominations kind of shows the flaw within Christianity? That you guys don't agree on anything? Take me deeper than I've ever gone before. Take me further. God, I long for more. Take me higher than I've been before. Jesus, I want more. Jesus, I need more. Fuck, lady. Like, I don't think you need God. Or maybe you need a good man or good, good woman or maybe good vibrator. I don't know. <laughs> you sound unsatisfied to me, woman, and I, I feel bad for you. Don't harden your heart when you hear the word of God. Hear it with an ear of faith. Okay, so I picked this because I've heard this sort of thing from Christians before that, like, I didn't believe the Bible because I didn't go into it the right way. I even heard this from uh, an acquaintance that was really religious for a while. Uh, they said when they they read the Bible, uh, when they they when they were really religious, that like they they went into it like telling themselves they they believed it before they even like went went through the whole thing. And it was a such a crazy crazy concept to me. 
But I, I guess it is the main way that someone can easily believe the Bible, is if you convince yourself as you're reading it that you have to believe it. But, like, as I, I was raised as a Lutheran, and I was taught that it was important that, like, Martin Luther taught that people should read the Bible for themselves. So I, as a trying to be a good Lutheran, took that to heart, and I read it trying to believe it. But I didn't think of myself as trying, like, making myself believe it with faith in the first place. I thought I would, like, read it and then get faith, and I, <laughs> I guess that was the flaw. I guess that's why I became an atheist, and I guess that's why um, Christians suggest this sort of thing a lot. And this sort of sentiment makes it easy to dismiss atheists. Like, they can just easily say, I just hardened my heart and I didn't even attempt to have faith when I was reading the Bible. And yeah, I, I just, it's a very dishonest sort of shutdown. Because I did try very hard to have faith as I was reading it. I, I thought as I was being raised Christian, that it was important to believe the Bible. I really be running off the blood of Jesus. <laughs> First off, what beautiful sentence structure there. I really be running off the blood of Jesus. This is an instance where I think it's important for, for people to try to look at religion as if they're aliens, as if they've never been on our planet. and. With that sort of mindset, it's so easy to see um, the the belief in in drinking Jesus's blood and having his body. How that just seems a bit archaic and silly. And why would God require you to have this ritual of drinking his blood? <laughs> really, be running off that Jesus blood. Powerful stuff. It is your duty to read and study the word of God for yourself. Don't let your pastor, parent, and certainly not Christian Twitter be your sole source of the word. Better check for yourself. Just because someone screams Jesus doesn't mean they know it all. And yeah, I, I picked this tweet because obviously, as I said before, I agree with this sort of sentiment. Read the Bible for yourself. Don't just believe what Christians around you are saying. As atheists say, it's an easy way to, to make an atheist is to just read the Bible. Jesus is my rock. He is my protector. He protects my loved ones. I call to him in my trouble and he hears my voice. His presence is near and I will not be shaken. Jesus, thank you for binding the demons in the chains of heaven. Cast them through the dates of hell. I-J-N. I don't know what I-J-N is. But, um, the, the dates of, the dates of hell. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I love this, like, badass angel picture she posted with this post, too. I picked this one out because I just, I just think this one is just, it's just a funny instance of, of how people like to have like Jesus and God and angels as, as a big source of protection. It's just funny to me when, when people think of these big supernatural forces as like constantly protecting over them when it's like, we have billions of people in the world, and obviously a lot of them are suffering, and a lot of bad shit is just constantly happening. Um, why is Jesus and God and all the angels and whatnot, like, what? Why is your good fortune in thanks to them? And so they're, they're, are they just, like, not protecting these other uh, suffering people? Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. According to like Christian beliefs, or this guy has hashtag Catholic here, so I guess he's Catholic. So according to the Catholic belief or Christian belief, God created us with sin. So 
why does he have to have mercy on us? Like, why wouldn't he just have mercy on the thing he created? And why did he even create his creations with sin? I don't know. Some, somehow the Christian doctrine just makes sense to people, and I'm the crazy one. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you sent us to Jesus Christ to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for salvation of our souls. <laughs> like, I gotta love the, the Jesus with his, his bright blue eyes there. It's, it's like boy band Jesus. <laughs> Hey girl, I got your salvation right here. <laughs> uh, we ask the almighty God to guide, protect, and bless our president. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, I this wonderful, wonderful Photoshop job. The master of Photoshop here. With this mega person of the decade. The man who saved America. President Donald Trump, a man of the people. So yeah, I know the creator of Peanuts was Christian, but I don't think he put much Christian stuff in Peanuts, actually. But here's someone that thought to take a Peanuts cartoon and put a, put a Jesus thing to it. So let's take a look. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. Tell me what love is, Chuck. A man called Jesus. This, this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. All right, dudes. Well, that's all the Jesus tweets I have for now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. And like if you liked this. And yeah. Later, dudes. <laughs>